Sure. Right, we'll have a test run. This might take a minute to get it right. Let's see how we go. It'd be nice to get it in one shot, wouldn't it? I see it could, yeah. Below at www.mensport.ie forward slash Okay, guys, so welcome back to the weekly YouTube series with myself, Glenn McGoldrick. And myself, Patrick Brown. So, guys, we are going to be changing how we lay out these videos for you guys going forward. The reason being is that we want to make them more educational and more informative for you guys on a weekly basis. So what we've done now is we've divided the video up into two separate segments. The first segment being my own model and the second segment being Patrick's model. This way you can follow each trim a little bit more in depthly and you won't get too confused from hopping backwards and forwards between each haircut. We've also made the videos a little bit longer we used to do the videos for 12 minutes, now we're going to be pushing for 16 to 18 minutes per video. So guys, we really hope that you enjoy this change and we really hope that this makes it more educational for you as well. Cool. Also, we would like to say a big thank you to each and every one of you for following our YouTube channel up to this point and for all your kind comments and words, all of which we read, we listen, and are very much appreciated. If of course, guys, at any point you see anything on any one of the videos, whether it be future or past, please don't hesitate to drop a comment if you have any questions or get in touch with either of us through Instagram or see our website, mensbarrier.ie for any courses that might spark your interest or anything you see on this channel. Cool, and just lastly guys as well, any of the equipment that you see myself or Patrick using is available in the link below. The website is www.mensport.ie forward slash tools. Thank you so much guys, enjoy the video. Okay guys, so, there's some really good models this week I think. Um, we're going to be showing something completely different really this week. Not that we normally do the same thing, but I think it's nice to show a little bit of variety now that we're coming into the last two weeks. Okay. Colm always wears his hair quite creative, quite fashion focused. Okay. And generally speaking with Colm, we've done all sorts of things. We've done mullets, we've done, you know, long crops, we've done everything. What he's decided to do, and we actually decided to do this the last time he was in, but the hair was too short to actually cut it into that specific shape. Yeah. So what we're going to do today, is create a really short mod style haircut, okay? So we're gonna have a really short choppy fringe to the front, and we're gonna have something a little bit longer to the sides and the back. The emphasis is gonna be on the external shape for the most part, so we're gonna have something quite choppy to the front. Again, we're gonna have something quite loose and choppy to the ear, and we're gonna have something quite loose and textured around the nape as well, okay? So we're gonna be keeping, I suppose, somewhat everything quite loose, quite movable, yeah? So we're gonna basically dishevel and reduce all this weight to the top first, and that's gonna leave us with a really nice layer on top, okay? That then is gonna give me a rough estimate for how long I wanna create my length on the sides, okay? The length on the sides, what we're gonna do is a really short square layer, okay, which is gonna allow me to keep some width in here, and it's gonna allow me to keep some length of the neck, okay? We're gonna do that square layer all the way through the back and sides, leaving the external length at the back and the sides reasonably long, okay? On the skin, okay, so we can simply use our fingers to basically rest or create tension with the hair, okay? And from there then we can use the actual finger razor itself directly on the skin, okay? Because this won't cut the skin, guys. There's a safety blade on either side of this, so you can use this freely. So what we're going to do guys, very simply is we're going to use vertical sections because obviously the hair is moving forward, okay? And we're going to take a profile guide straight down the middle. Okay, we're going to use the nose as a guide 
Try either side of the nose. We're gonna use our clips the whole way as well. Now notice how I'm using the fine side of the comb here because I wanna create quite a lot of tension. Cool. All right, so reverse triangular here to the top. So we're gonna leave some extra length towards the back of the head or towards the crown, okay? Because I want to leave some movement in the hair. Okay, if I don't leave some length through there, I'm not gonna have any movement and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna use the longest short piece, okay, here as my guide to begin putting the line square. And then as we work that square line in initially, we're then gonna to start to work something more triangular towards the back. So as soon as I finish working through the frontal lobe and through the apex, I'm then gonna to start to become triangular through this area here. Okay, and that's just gonna allow me to leave a little bit of length and have some movement in that back panel. Okay, if I take all this too short, I'm not gonna have any movement, then the hair will just look like it's static. One and two. Two is gonna come back to one. Okay, so two to one. So we're over directing two to one. Okay. There's the guide. Okay, I'm actually gonna take that a little bit short the back. And now, because I've taken the guide from the front, I can work from front to back, or from back to front, sorry. Initially, my first section went from front to back to be able to actually take the guide from the fringe. Now, my sections are working from back to front. It's easier to cut this way because the line travels that way. Okay, if the line is traveling forward, we want to try and cut the hair while it's moving forward. Okay, guide, and now I'm taking section number three. Three goes to two. There's the guide. Number three, number four, last section. I'm working that all the way down until the contour. Yeah? Last section is right on the end of the contour. in there now. Right. So I'm just going to put this square to the back. Okay, and I'm just going to leave, I suppose, probably like a finger's length in general. Okay, I'm not looking to leave it too long. We're actually looking to create a really nice short layer. Okay. Section one. We're going to work our way down the head. Nice square line. And I'm gonna stop cutting just when I get to just below the occipital bone, okay? Because I'm looking to actually leave that hair there as a longer panel, okay? Like we said, I want some disconnection to ensure the head's in the right position. There's the guide. Nice square line. Coming out from the base, there's the guide. And again, I'm only working this down to the occipital bone. Side of the ears, got a nice kind of layer to the back and the top, okay, which is all much the same length. Then we have this nice layer to the sides now as well. Now, so I haven't cut this side yet, so we're going to walk through it how we just cut it on the other side. Section off the top, 
Okay, because we don't need that in play. And then all I've done here is taken a section from my layer in the back and pushed the chair to the side. Now, we're gonna start off with horizontal sections on the bottom. And that's gonna be where I connect my layer from the back into my layer on the side. There's the guide. I was going to create a square cotton line all the way across. Section number two. We're going to elevate section one to section two. There's the guide. Next section. Section three. Two gets elevated to three. There's the guide. You know, I don't want it to be too long on, on the edges either. We're just looking to have it like flush. So anything that I feel is a little bit too long, I'm just gonna come in and just gently just personalize it away. We see all this length here to the middle, guys. We see here like looks quite full, heavy, strong. But once we come to the fringe, we see how kind of soft and wispy, and dare I say, very weak it looks, yeah? That's because in terms of the hairstyle, it's been neither one nor the other. It's a bit of a crop, it's a bit of a quiff, okay? There's no actual definite um, finish on this particular haircut today, all right? So what we are gonna do, guys, we made a decision, and that what we wanna do is really implement a nice, strong crop finish towards the front with a little bit of disconnection worked in there as well, okay? I'm gonna section it off in line with that. See that here? So the cows at the front, or splits, I'm gonna section it off in line with that. Now what I am gonna do is definitely look to a little bit more of an interval in the section, all right? So we can really, see the way it's like a bit of a yin and yang this little motion through the middle there. So when I cut this side one way and the other side a different way, see when I actually blow dry these out, flat, the two shapes will merge together in the middle, okay? Just to soften and create a much more shattered blunt line. What I've done now, I'm just literally layering off that baseline that I've created at the front. What we're working here is nice and square to the left hand side, okay? For a much more sharper effect. Working square back to front, front to back, all right. Notice guys, I pretty much only have two little sections here in this little left-hand panel, okay? Section number two, it's brought right back to one. Check the guide each time, of course. Bring the section on up. And just cut the line very, very simply. So even though I'm doing something a bit more, if you like edgy or creative, what have you, I'm still working with pretty much basic fundamentals, all right? Using my numerics, picking my shape, ask myself what shape I want to create, how do I want it to look. And basically, slotting each shape along with each technique in each section. Very, very simple. All right. Following the head shape once again. Choice of length. I'm just working that round line from front to back. Again, same thing, I just follow the head shape. What I'm using here as reference is, of course, as always, just the head shape. Very, very simply, from front to back. Now, round line, 
in the front. Okay, we lose a little, we pick up a little. Nice, just cut the line in, very, very simply. Fantastic. All right, let's just assess the shape here at the front, see what we have. Okay, we see we have something slightly looser and more shattered on one side. Come through the opposite side then, what you'll see, what we have, is a slightly different finish. Reason being because the technique and the shape that we used was slightly different. We groom all this down, we'll see, have a much more stronger, blunter finish here. On the opposite side of the grow pattern, guys, we have a much more looser finish on the right hand side in accordance with this, very, very simply. Whenever it wants to go forward, goes forward. Whenever it wants to go back, goes back. Okay, what we are gonna do is come through, once again. We need to be very, very aware of what we wanna graduate here, guys, because some of this we will want to keep because it's part of our disconnection, and so on. create that triangle line that we're talking about. If the head is upright, unfortunately, I have to really work to get in there and get that triangle line. The more the head is forward, the body comes up, and the triangle line is there. Very, very simple. Okay, section number one, before we pass back over. Knuckles on that last square point. Fingers come down once again. And look how tight we're gonna go here, guys. Nice and tight. Come on down and check it. Now look where the weight is, guys right on that round part of there. What I'll do, go through my top section once again, add just a little bit of free flowing texture from back to front, and point cut it now when it's wet. We can, of course, do a little bit of this when it is dry, but again, we don't want to be too forceful with it. We want the texture to be very, very loose and free flowing, yeah? We want it to be very lived in, disheveled haircut. Here's a little piece of my disconnection. Of course, here is where it's layered differently on the other side. Two different shapes in here, guys. I'm gonna point cut the right-hand side, break that upper touch. Once again, work from the middle on out to the right. See that longer length on the right-hand side where we layered it differently. And once we blow dry this down, I wanna see that beautiful little interlock of both the shapes. So with this and this, that's disconnected. Two different lengths, but when I brush them down, can't tell the difference, yeah? So technically it's disconnected, even though it has, this is key, a visual balance. Visually things look, okay, matching together, all right? Just pasty, yeah. a little bit. Just a little bit. A little pasty. What was that word we used to use for the... Yeah. So talk about tossless spray again. Tossless spray. <laughs> there you are. Uh, There's such a thing as tossless spray, I swear to God. I used to love I've that. seen it many times. My favorite one. Tossless spray, yeah. Tossle. A little tossle. A little tossle. Underneath. The zero, zero line. One point five right underneath the number two. Okay. And then that then we have the point five. Find the other zero. Okay, fade's nearly done. All right, simple. Just gonna finesse that out just a little touch. Maybe shape it up towards the front here. All it needs is a little touch of the one and the transition guard and the fade is done. All right, right underneath that number two, guys. See the way it's been brought right underneath? Really helping us build that nice, strong square shape that we're talking about. Bring it right in along the front here. Scooping it right underneath the number two. Okay, that's gonna open up. Now, all we're gonna do now, is just to finesse the fade, is walk down the guards. One open. Right underneath where the transition was. The one close right underneath that. 